Peace, peace, soul family. Welcome, welcome. Peace, peace, everyone. Welcome. The 2024 Energy Deep Dive with Sister Myra. Welcome, welcome, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome, everyone. Okay, yes. Opal Fire says, we ready, we ready. <laughs> welcome, everyone. This is um, um, Unexpected Unplanned Part 2 to the 2024 um, Energy uh, Live that I did last year. If you did not watch it, make sure you watch that. The link is below. I did a deep dive into you know, what the energy is going to be like this year. And this is a part two. This is a part two of that. And we're going to get right into it. So yes, we have a special guest tonight. Sister Myra Moss is in the house. I'm so excited about this. I know some of you are excited about this. Some of y'all were in here early in the morning. I know there was a little bit of a confusion with YouTube. It's all good. <laughs> I'm happy that you are here now. Welcome. Make sure you have your pens. Make sure you have your notebooks, 222 in the chat. Make sure you have your pens and notebooks because you are going to want to take notes on this. We're going to do a deeper dive, like the next level of what I did last week on the energy of 2024. So again, welcome everyone. Welcome everyone. Peace. I know I see you. Okay, there we go. Let me know in the chat if you can hear me okay, if you can see okay, if everything is copacetic. Okay, good. I hope y'all can hear me now. It said my sound went out and I was like, oh no, oh no. Okay, I'm back here. Yeah, you guys can hear me. Everything is good. Let me know in the chat. Y'all know if I had to restart this whole thing, I would have restarted this whole thing because we're going to get this information out. <laughs> Let me know. Yeah, thank you, Shanta. Everything is good. Everything is good. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Like the video, share this video. This is going to be some deep stuff tonight, y'all. This is going to be some deep stuff tonight. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> okay. So last week I did a live um, on the energy of 2024. We did a deep dive and we looked at uh, various different modalities and um, it was amazing. I had a really good time teaching. It was about three and a half hours. One of the things that we looked, one of the things that we spoke about was uh, this vision that I saw of the four fixed signs, the, the four signs on the, the fixed cross, right? And how I described it was that these four energies were like locked away for like the past decade or so energetically, where they were struggling energetically. So we're talking about uh, um, Aquarius, Leo. Okay, and then we're talking about Taurus, Scorpio. And so I said like this year, what I saw was like, it was like this, this thing that they were in this container and the container was, they were busting out of the container. And when they came out, they were coming out with their full energy, the full elemental energy that they um, hold, that they embody, and that these four Zodiac were super powerful, okay? And so I talked about that on the live for these four, um, Zodiac. 
And so um, the next day, Sister Myra texted me and she was like, you did a really good job. Like you did a really good job. She was give, telling me some stuff. And she said, I forgot to tell you something. Now the night before I was meditating and it was like 8.15 and I was about to wrap it up to come live. And Spirit said, call Sister Myra. There's something you need from her. And it was about the four horsemen. So I called her and she gave me, we spoke for a while, like 30 minutes. And I said, Sister Myra, I have to go, I have to go live. And um, she gave me this piece the following day. So I was like, can you teach this? Can, can we go, can you go live on YouTube and teach this? Because I can't teach this how you can teach this. Like I can't explain this like how you can explain it. And she was like, yes. So it is my honor to welcome all of you um, tonight to Sister Myra Moss. Welcome, Sister Myra. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Melanie, and your wonderful audience. I'm so happy to be here. It's always a pleasure uh, to come in and part information, um, you know, especially since it's so it received so wonderfully. So thank you so much for inviting me and honoring me, you know, um, to share, um, you know, what I get. Um, like I said, I'm a reporter for the Cosmos. So what I get, I like to uh, pass on uh, so we all can understand the bigger things that are happening right now. We are at a major um, crossroads at this time. Um, and it's all looking very good. Uh, my favorite phrase, um, because balance is the key to everything, um, and energy unfolds through a negative and positive polarity. Uh, and my favorite phrase for that is, as bad as it's been, is as good as it's about to get, you guys. So get ready. We're getting ready to see an opposite um, cycle of energy from uh, what we've um, come from. So it's about to get very good. So we're going to talk about um, uh, the four horses of the apocalypse. We're going to talk about the four fixed signs. Uh, and I have to start that by um, talking about the three cross levels. Uh, we're being influenced um, from the highest levels of the universe uh, through the three cross levels. There's three cross levels that are a major influence uh, because <clears throat> there's a universal purpose being fulfilled. Uh, we're at the culmination of a universal purpose being fulfilled that's been unfolding for many, many lifetimes. And so um, we um, energy, um, that's what I teach on, uh, spiritual energy. And um, energy unfolds through a negative and positive polarity. It unfolds in spirals. Uh, we complete spirals uh, for access to the next level where we start a new one at a higher vibration. And we're at a major completion of a cycle right now. Uh, and anytime we go into the Aquarian age, we've completed enough cycles uh, to evolve, Aquarius being the sign of evolution, uh, to a new level. Uh, in the universe. So um, that's the major cycle we're at right now. Um, we're, um, we're about to balance. The key to everything is balance. So uh, we've just completed the negative polarity. And now it's going to be an automatic response spiritually in equal measure uh, to balance that out. 180 degrees on each half. And as we balance it with the opposite 180 degrees, that's how we complete a full 360 degree spiral, which opens up a vortex. And um, uh, so we can access uh, the higher vibrations uh, from the next level. We're ascending levels. This is not about time. This is about levels. There's a multitude of levels we have to ascend. Um, when we are uh, completing those cycles or those spirals. This is an infinite process of transformation, regeneration for evolution of a new spiritual rulership. That, I just said, embodied the fixed cross. So uh, this is a, a cycle of 
transformation, regeneration for evolution of a new spiritual rulership. So um, how this gets activated, anytime we go into the Aquarian age, that's the point of evolution. And as we keep complete each cycle, uh, that gives us evolution uh, or ascension to the next level where we start a new cycle at a higher vibration only for access to the next level and the next level. This is an infinite process. You never get there. You only complete spirals or cycles for access to the next level where you start a new one at a higher vibration. But the major cycle has to be completed um, in, in the number 13. So we're completing the major 13th cycle uh, for this evolution. We do this in anytime we get into the Aquarian age. That means we balanced on enough levels to evolve to a new level uh, in spiritual energy in the universe. So the first cross that we're going to talk about that activated and initiated all this is the cardinal cross. We're going to start with the cardinal cross. Uh, our feature is on the fixed cross, but we're going to um, put it in context uh, to the larger purpose that's being fulfilled. So. We're going to start with the Cardinal Cross, uh, which is the cross uh, that activates and initiates a whole new level of energy, royal energy from the highest vibrations of the universe. This is the Cardinal Cross, which activates the royal energy from the highest levels of the universe. And when we're dealing with those uh, four cardinal signs, um, and that's the leader. That's, and remember, you have all these crosses in you. You have all this energy in you. It's just a matter of, you know, how they show up for you individually. Uh, when we talk about our sign, we're talking about our sun sign, what we came in here to focus through and expose in each lifetime. That is your sun sign. But you have a full universe of energy within you. So everything I'm talking about um, is within your chart. So don't just focus on your uh, energy of your sun sign. Um, when we talk about all this energy and how it's unfolding for all of us, it'll be more personal um, for those who are on the cross that represents their sun sign. So starting with the cardinal uh, cross. Now we have, um, that's the royal energy. And there we start with Aries. Uh, opposite Libra, and then Cancer opposite Capricorn. That's the cardinal cross. Um, so uh, starting with Aries, uh, the fire. Anytime we're dealing with fire, we're dealing with the sun, the sun component. S-O-N, individual, and S-U-N at the planetary level. So we're dealing with a multitude of levels. So the sun, uh, the fire element. So when we go to Aries, uh, it's fire, so that's considered elementally the sun. And the royal sun or the cardinal sun um, or the royal sun is the prince, which is Aries, the prince of the royal family. And he's opposite uh, Libra. Um, <clears throat> Libra is um, air. And whenever we're dealing with the air element, we're dealing with the father component. Uh, the, the fire is the son, the air is the father. So um, the father and the son, uh, or the son and the father, the air element with Libra, the cardinal air. And anytime we're dealing with the air, we're dealing with the uh, father and the royal or the cardinal father, the king, Libra. So Aries and Libra, uh, the son and the father. Uh, the son of power and father of uh, righteous father spirit. Um, that is the um, cardinal masculine. And then when we go to the cardinal feminine, we're dealing with cancer, uh, the cardinal water, uh, which the water is always the mama. So the cardinal water, the queen. So cancer is the queen of the royal family in this cardinal cross and it's opposite Capricorn, uh, the cardinal earth or the royal daughter, um, the royal daughter of energy, 
uh, is where we're dealing with the princess. So it's a full royal family of energy. Uh, uh, the king, the queen, the prince, and the princess. <clears throat> and I'm still preaching about this Mother Earth, because if you're still looking at it as Mother Earth, you're not going to be able to get this picture. You're not going to be able to understand. And we've been so programmed, and um, and that's going to be part of the fixed cross, how we're going to break some of that programming. But we're being so programmed in Mother Earth. We don't want to relinquish that, but we're going to have to if we want to look at the highest level, because we're dealing with two families, a physical family and a cosmic family. So those four members through the four elements represents the uh, royal family, which is uh, mother and father and son and daughter. So it's daughter earth, not mother earth, daughter earth, mama universe. All souls come in through mama universe, manifested, materialized through daughter earth. So that's the cardinal cross. Um, Aries opposite Libra as the prince and the king, and then Cancer opposite Capricorn as the queen and the princess. This is the cross that will activate the highest, <clears throat> excuse me, the highest vibration of energy from the royal levels of the universe. So it's the cardinal cross that activates this new royal power of energy from the highest levels of the universe. And once the cardinal cross activates um, this higher vibration of royal energy, then we get to the subject of uh, this presentation, which is the fixed cross, because the cardinal cross will activate and the fixed cross will set that energy into motion. Uh, the fixed cross um, is what reverses the energy from a mundane physical illusion of power to a royal creative and spiritual empowerment. So it is the fixed cross that reverses the energy. This is why we call it the four horses of the apocalypse. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to move to the mutable cross because I wanna come back and feature the fixed cross, but I want you to understand all three of the crosses, but we're gonna focus on the fixed cross, but I'm gonna describe all three cross levels. Uh, before we focus on that fixed cross. So after the fixed cross, after the cardinal cross activates the highest vibration of royal energy, the fixed cross is like the army, or it is what enforces what the cardinal cross activates, the fixed cross will set into motion. And now we're dealing with uh, Taurus opposite Scorpio and Leo opposite Aquarius. That is the fixed cross. And once the fixed cross reverses the energy um, that the cardinal cross activates, then we get to the mutable cross. And I have been seeing uh, instances of the mutable cross now starting to come into play. Because <clears throat> anytime spiritually we're dealing with the threes, we're dealing with magic. And anytime we're dealing with magic, we're dealing with mama's domain, mama magic. <clears throat> Father, the air element, the conscious reality deals with knowing, logic and reason, um, understanding. Uh, but mama, opposite that, um, we're dealing with uh, magic. We're dealing with, it uh, goes beyond your knowing, goes beyond your contemplation. Uh, the magic um, outside of what you know, uh, that's mama's domain. Um, anytime we're dealing with magic, first two letters of magic is Ma. That is her domain. Father, knowing, logic, and reason. Air element, the conscious realm. Mama, uh, the unknown, the magical, um, because it goes beyond what you can figure out or beyond your knowing or beyond your understanding. And anytime we're dealing with the threes, we're dealing with magic. Third time, the charm in the spiritual realm. So that's what the mutable cross will do. It will adapt us to a whole new level of spiritual rulership uh, by accessing the magic of Mama Universe. And now we're dealing with the threes. Uh, Gemini, third sign of the Zodiac, opposite Sagittarius, the ninth sign of the Zodiac, and then Virgo, the sixth sign opposite 
Pisces, the 12th sign. So that is the mutable cross that will adapt us to a whole new level of reality and a new rulership where we now have access to the magic of Mama Universe. So those are what all three crosses bring to the table. And uh, the third cross is the closer. Uh, it's the one that opens up the magic and fulfills and completes, you know, what the Cardinal Cross initiates and the fixed cross sets into motion. And then the, the immutable cross will adapt us to a rulership where we have access to mama's magic. Um, third time the charm uh, with those threes. So going back to the fixed cross, that's going to be the focus. Um, because the fixed cross is what has been the most dominant energy we have been feeling uh, in this universal purpose uh, being fulfilled. It has been the fixed cross that has been the most dominant in what we've been going through. Because the fixed cross, as I said, it reverses the energy. Uh, what the cardinal cross activates, the fixed cross will reverse the energy and set it into motion. Um, out of the physical, mundane illusion of power to a spiritual, creative, and royal empowerment. That is what the fixed cross will do in the reversal of this energy. It does do the heavy work. It acts as the army for the cardinal cross or the enforcers. And that's why I call them the four horses of the apocalypse. They're the ones that disrupts the mundane physical illusion of power to a spiritual, creative, and royal empowerment. So they are the ones who do the heavy work. Uh, and this is when we're describing those four horses of the apocalypse that is transforming the energy. Uh, so this is the focus, the fixed cross. This is what we most have been feeling. And wherever the fixed cross shows up in your chart is where you're going to feel that energy, where you've been... Um, uh, where you're letting go of holding on, like I was talking about Mother Earth, um, letting go of values and habits and things that you've been programmed to believe in the physical illusion or in the mundane uh, reality of empowerment. Uh, so uh, the fixed cross is where we let go of those things we've been holding on to um, in the programming of the illusion or the programming of the matrix, what we think is real, uh, but now um, that was only part of the programming of the illusion. Uh, and we have to break that programming uh, and reverse because spirit is opposite the physical. So the same rules that apply uh, for the physical reality is opposite the rules we have to adjust to as we're stepping up to uh, a new spiritual rulership. And all this commences in the Aquarius age. Whenever we get into the age of Aquarius, um, that is when that fixed cross is activated. Um, so we did go into the Aquarian age in uh, 2013. Uh, 13 is the highest vibration number. And that's what we have to do, 13 cycles before we evolve uh, to this new level of rulership in the universe. And that's when we hit the Aquarius age. Uh, Aquarius age, we've balanced on enough levels for that evolution. Aquarius is the sign of evolution. So it's the sign of the rebel. Um, it's this air sign. So we're dealing with what, the knowing. That's why it's called the sign of I know. Uh, it has the highest knowing or the highest outreach to spiritual knowledge. So that's Aquarius, the last air sign, the one with the highest access to spiritual knowledge. Anytime we're dealing with the air element, we're dealing with the mind, what we know. Um, and also that's the father component, the air element, father spirit, righteous father spirit, who speaks to us externally through how we think or the mind. So Aquarius, the last air sign, the ultimate father, the ultimate knowing, the sign of I know. Now, you guys know I call myself a holistic, which means I don't believe in 12 individual signs anymore. I believe in six axes of energy. It's not until you put the two 
halves together or opposites together that you have the whole. That's the formula of creation. Two halves make a whole. Each half goes 180 degrees. Energy can only go 180 degrees before it has to be balanced with the opposite 180 degrees to complete the full 360 degree spiral and open up that vortex for access to the higher vibrations of the universe. So activating um, the six axes of energy. So that means I don't talk about one sign without talking about its opposite sign. If we only talk about one sign, it's like half a sentence. You have to complete the sentence with the opposite sign. So that becomes very um, pertinent when we're dealing with the Aquarius because its opposite sign is Leo. And this is what's activating this whole new uh, level of reality in spiritual rulership. Aquarius is the sign of evolution. It's the sign of I know, and it's the sign of the humanitarian. That's the qualities of Aquarius. That's what it brings to the table in the Aquarian age. The opposite sign of Aquarius is Leo. Leo is the creative ruler, creative rulership. Wherever the fire is at is the power, but the power is creative powers. Uh, and Leo is the sign of creative rulers or the creative rulership. So when we balance the Aquarius with the Leo, it's the evolution, Aquarius, of a new age rulership that is Leo. So it's time to evolve a new age rulership, which is Leo, when you balance Aquarius and Leo going into the Aquarian age. So the evolution of a new age rulership. And since Aquarius is the sign of evolution, you know, um, it, it's the sign of the humanitarian. So it's time to evolve a new creative rulership out of an abuse of power to a humanitarian empowerment. That's the only sin there is, the abuse of power in the spiritual realm. It's opposite the physical, where there's a multitude of sins. There's only one sin spiritually. That's the abuse of power. This is when the powers that have been have become so stagnated and corrupted in their rulership um, that, um, you know, uh, it's time uh, to bust that status quo um, because the planetary ruler of Aquarius is Uranus. <clears throat> and Uranus does sudden, abrupt, unexpected, explosive, evolutionary, revolutionary changes. So when the powers that have been has gotten so stagnated and corrupted in their power, which they have done uh, from a global level, a global level. There, it's a global agenda afoot. And they have become so corrupted, all the powers, all the systems of the universe, uh, excuse me, of the earth has become corrupted uh, in their power. Power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And all the systems of the world has been corrupted. And that is the um, political system, the medical system, the pharmaceutical system, the educational system, uh, the entertainment system, the news media, uh, the social platforms, all of these systems have become corrupted at a global level. And whenever we get that type of corruption and the stagnation of that corruption of power, at a global level, that is when we go into the Aquarian age where it can explode that status quo of the corruption of the powers at a global level. Because the next level after global is planetary. And that brings Big Mama to the table because she is Mama Universe and the planets are her children, especially Daughter Earth. That is her precious stone. So, um, in the Aquarian age, that is when we have explosive, revolutionary, evolutionary um, uh, changes of spiritual rulership um, demonstrated by Leo. <clears throat> Leo by itself represents that abuse of power. But in balance with Aquarius, um, 
it represents the evolution of a new rulership out of the abuse of power to a humanitarian empowerment. So um, the evolution of a new rulership <clears throat> from the abuse of power to a humanitarian empowerment. Uh, Leo is also the sign of the joyous ruler, the joyous ruler. Uh, Leo is the sign of the children as well. So this is all about uh, the evolution uh, of a new rulership that has been generationally passed down, uh, exposing the wounds of our generational wounding uh, in order to uh, identify those wounds or those impurities, cleanse and purge of those impurities for our healing so we can step up as the new rulers for the new Aquarian age. So all of this has really been an alchemical process, turning what is base into gold, uh, because the ultimate sin is the abuse of power. Um, and um, um, like I said, they've reached their maximum of abuse of power. Energy can only go 180 degrees before it has to be balanced with the opposite 180 degrees. So they've reached their maximum of abuse of power. And that is uh, Leo without the balance of Aquarius. So now that we're balancing the Aquarian age with the Leo energy, it's all about um, evolving to a humanitarian uh, rulership, a joyous rulership um, for humanity out of the abuse of power to a humanitarian empowerment. That is the vertical leg of the fixed cross. Um, from uh, Aquarius sitting at the top of that cross and then Leo sitting at the, the bottom. So uh, the evolution of this new rulership from the abuse of power to a humanitarian empowerment is what we get with the axis between uh, Aquarius and Leo on that fixed cross. So in order to evolve Aquarius, um, to a new creative rulership, Leo, we have to bring in the horizontal leg of that fixed cross. The horizontal leg of the fixed cross is Taurus and Scorpio. So um, we're going to evolve Aquarius out of uh, the abuse of power to a humanitarian empowerment with Leo creative rulership, and then the horizontal leg, in order to make that evolution, uh, there has to be a transformation. That is Scorpio energy. It is the energy of transformation. That means the death of the old for a rebirth of the new at a higher level. The old has to go in order for the new to blossom. So there has to be a transformation. The Mayans call Scorpio the great crossover or the celestial ship of the north. If we look at the, um, from another angle, the energy, uh, we all get into partnership with our spirit through Libra. After being cleansed and purified by the last physical sign, Virgo, cleansing and purifying us of false values. Anytime we're dealing with earth, we're dealing with values. So Virgo being the last sign on the physical half is the one that cleanses us and purifies us of false values to the matrix. Virgo is where we unplug from the matrix. That gives us an ascension. Uh, and see, okay, um, I should have started with Leo because whenever you put Leo and Virgo together, you have the Sphinx, the body of the lion, Leo, the power, and the head of the woman, Virgo, wisdom power guided by wisdom, where we have to supersede the ego, Leo, and open the heart, also Leo, to the value of wisdom, Virgo. So power guided by wisdom. And this is the rulership at the physical end that is being fulfilled through the opposite. You always fulfill through the opposite. So the rulership of superseding the ego and opening the heart to the value of wisdom, Leo and Virgo, is fulfilled uh, when we came out of the Piscean age, the opposite of Virgo, into the Aquarian age, the opposite of Leo. So this is the rulership at a spiritual level that is being fulfilled uh, as we've uh, learned how to supersede our ego and open our heart to wisdom. Uh, so it starts with Leo and Virgo, the Leo sun, 
who is cleansed and purified by the virgin mama of uh, false values uh, to the matrix to unplug and then ascend above the horizon line into the spiritual half through Libra, where we can now get into a partnership with our spirit, having been cleansed and purified through Virgo. Um, now getting into a balanced partnership with our own spirit, come to our individual wholeness. And as the twin souls, um, and we balance with our spirit through Libra, it's also where our mate balances with their spirit through Libra. Only then can the two come together as twin souls, when each are both in balance with their own spirit. And it doesn't have to be a physical relationship to be a twin soul relationship because we're dealing with energy, vibrations. Who is your match on an energy level? Who have you cultivated <clears throat> an energy relationship with through many, many lifetimes? So it's that balance of energy, not the physicality. There's physical twin souls, but there's also twin souls uh, that supersedes the physical level. So um, when each are in balance with their spirit, that is when we get to the next energy of Scorpio. Scorpio is the sign of bonding. We bond in Scorpio. Uh, and the twin souls will bond in Scorpio. Scorpio is the sign of extremes and intensity, water, emotional extremes, emotional intensity in the bonding of the twin souls, which is how we activate the transformation, Scorpio's energy. Scorpio's main job, the transformer. When the twin souls bond uh, through Libra, the next energy is Scorpio, where they bond and activate the transformation with the Mayans called the great crossover, which will cross you over to Sagittarius, where you come to the abundance or the great creative place of stepping up to the abundance of your power, fire. Sagittarius is fire, the last fire sign. Uh, the ultimate sun, the planetary ruler is Jupiter. Anything Jupiter touches, it expands and it brings in abundance. So stepping, crossing over to the abundance of your collective power as uh, Sagittarius or that's a SAR's energy. A SAR was cut down into 14 cycles so he could mature and how to use that power righteously and not abuse it, being that he was the ultimate sun most prone to abuse that power. That is why he was uh, cut down into the 14 cycles of time by Father Spirit, righteous Father Spirit, Father Time, the father of righteous thinking. So he had to cut the ultimate son in his power down uh, so he would not abuse that power, learn to use it righteously before he could be fully endowed with that power. When the predecessors when our predecessors abuse their powers, they screwed up the world. If we abuse our powers, it's going to be detrimental to the universe. So this has all been a process to keep us from uh, stepping up to the full power uh, without abusing that power. So that's the other way we can look at it. When we're looking at uh, different levels, we're looking at many, 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 many uh, aspects of how this energy is unfolding. So I'm giving you um, the perspectives of how it operates in a cycle, as well as how it operates through those three cross levels. Um, connecting those dots is what you have to do uh, to understand spiritual messages. So um, superseding uh, the false programming and the false values of the matrix, unplugging, and then um, um, ascending to the higher spiritual half of the operation uh, is that aspect. But then going back to the fixed cross, in order to evolve Aquarius as the new age rulers, Leo, there has to be that transformation, Scorpio, the horizontal leg of that fixed cross, a transformation. And what has to be transformed is to, uh, the opposite sign of Scorpio, which is Taurus. Taurus is the sign of values. Taurus is the sign of habits. <clears throat> so this is the Lot's wife syndrome. 
the horizontal leg of the fixed cross between Scorpio and Taurus. In other words, in order to evolve as new age rulers, there has to be a transformation of our values and our habits. That is what the fixed cross is bringing to the table. We can't be Lot's wife. We can't be uh, looking back, holding on to the values and the issues of the past that had been programmed us in false values in this illusion or this matrix. We can't be holding on to those habits and those values in the mundane reality as we're stepping up as new royal rulers. So transformation of values and habits when we're looking at Taurus, the sign of values and habits. They took Taurus, the sign of values, and turned it into materialism so that we gauge our value based on what we possess materially. That's the external use of the Taurus energy. Taurus is a personal sign. It's on the personal half of the astrological cycle. It sits right next door to Aries, which is the most personal sign of the Zodiac. So you're going to personally go internal. What we're dealing with is internal versus external. External is illusionary. Internal is spiritual reality. So in the external uh, use of the Taurus energy, we define our personal value based on what we do, the work we do to earn our material power or our money in the physical uh, reality of the illusion, um, basing our value on what we possess materially. <clears throat> that is how they've turned Taurus, the sign of values, into materialism. However, if you go internal, earth and water are internal, feminine. Spirit moves inside out, not outside in. That means earth is your security and water is your emotional happiness. Mama speaks to you internal through um, how you feel, the water element from your ancient memory because she is the ancient of ancients. She's the mom of ancestors. She's the mom of antiquity, where father speaks to you external through how you think on the mind, the air element. Uh, mama talks to you internal through how you feel from your ancient memory. So going internal and defining the value, Taurus, the value of your personal, work and purpose um, that you came here to do in your work uh, for your spiritual power, going internal and defining from within your own self-worth and your own self-value for what it is you're bringing to the table and contribution uh, to the fulfillment of this larger universal purpose. We've all been mastering through many lifetimes on a purpose that we wanted to bring to the table in this lifetime, going into the Aquarian age, to make a contribution to this larger fulfillment of a universal purpose unfolding. Each one of us has an individual purpose, a unique purpose and contribution to this holistic purpose being fulfilled. And only your spirit can give you that guidance and step you up and identify where you need to let go of old values old habits um, that you've uh, hung on to uh, in your value in this physical illusion. It's time for us to let go of our material prop, of our material um, crutch, um, because spirit and material, spiritual power and material power are opposites. You can't serve two masters. So it's time to transition from a dependency on our material power by going internal and defining from within the value of uh, the purpose we came here to serve in contribution to the fulfillment of this universal purpose. So letting go of old values and old habits, they are become mundane as we're stepping up to a royal operation. We have to step up to a higher vibration. Here's a story Spirit gave me on that. <clears throat> it brought um, the uh, cartoon Homer Simpson, and in this episode, he finds a monkey claw, and he has three wishes, and the last wish, he wishes for a bologna sandwich. Everybody says, bologna sandwich? Why would he waste his wish on a bologna sandwich? Well, 
now that we're stepping up in the Aquarian age as the new age rulers, um, we have to step up to universal values, higher values. And then we're dealing with Taurus, we're dealing with values. So if we're stepping up as the new rulers uh, in this evolutionary process, we have to step up to higher values. If we're still wishing for money, a car, a house, a job, um, anything materialistic, those are now baloney sandwiches. We have to step up to higher universal values, which include prosperity, peace of mind, security, harmony, joy, protection. These are higher universal values. Daughter Earth has to get back in conformity to the larger universal flow of energy based on the spiritual principles of righteousness. So that encompass new values. We've had our wish list too low, uh, low values in the physical mundane uh, uh, through material power. Now it's time to us transition. The mama bird is trying to push the baby bird out of that proverbial material nest so they can find out they have been liberated. They can fly. They no longer have the yoke of materialism keeping them grounded in the physical illusion. This goes back to Scorpio energy because what we're going to look at uh, when we look at the Bible uh, phrase, uh, the scripture, when we talk about those four horses of the apocalypse, the fixed cross, it is depicted in the Bible. Ezekiel chapter one. And when they talk about uh, Scorpio, when we talk about Scorpio energy, uh, the mama bird trying to push the baby birds out of that proverbial nest so they can find out they have been liberated. That is Scorpio, the sign of liberation. It's the sign of um, being liberated in your power as you transform your values and step up to higher universal values rather than the mundane physical illusion of what is a value. So being able to transition from uh, the mundane physical illusion in your values to the spiritual um, um, values of the universe and the liberation that is representing the Scorpio energy um, that liberates you from those mundane values of, of the illusion, uh, the transformer. So I want you to understand that as we move uh, to describing how we're seeing uh, this fixed cross uh, in the scriptures, um, like I said, uh, uh, Ezekiel uh, chapter uh, one. So yeah, Melanie, you can go ahead and um, put that up. So um, I also got it on my phone, so you'll also see me looking down, but um, if you can see that, um, Ezekiel uh, chapter one, <clears throat> verse one, verse two, verse three. I'm going to start at verse four here. I'm going to start at verse four where it says, uh, and I looked and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself and a brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber out of the midst of the fire. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance as they had the likeness of a man. And everyone had four faces and everyone had four wings and their feet were straight feet and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides and their four, and they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. Uh, they turned not when they went, they went it, every one straight forward. Now here's the it's verse 10. That is the one that describes uh, this fixed cross. It says, as for the likeness of their faces, the four had the face of a man. That would be Aquarius, the water bearer. Aquarius, the face of a man. And the face of a lion, which is Leo, the opposite of Aquarius, uh, Leo. 
So that's the vertical leg of that fixed cross. Uh, Aquarius, the man, and Leo, uh, the lion. It says on the right side. And therefore, four had the face of an ox, which of course we're talking to the bull or Taurus energy on the left side. And they four also had the face of an eagle, which is Scorpio. This is why I describe Scorpio, the sign of transformation, as the sign of liberation. That is what the ego is symbolic of, being liberated from the mundane physical illusion of power to a spiritual, creative, and royal empowerment. The transformation of our values is what liberates us from uh, uh, the illusion of what is the value. So that is why uh, um, Scorpio is described as the ego, uh, the sign at its highest vibration of liberation. If we look at the lowest vibration, we're looking at the Scorpio, uh, but like I said, there's a many levels, levels and layers, levels, levels and levels. It's like peeling back an onion many layers and levels, and seeing different faces at different levels. So at the bottom level, we see Scorpio as the scorpion. But then through the multitude of levels, you have to ascend to the highest level. Remember, this is all about the balance of opposites from one end to the opposite end. Uh, that is what you have to do. You have to stay limber and follow your spirit from one end to the opposite end. Anytime you get into one position, that is stagnation. That is where you're being stagnated in your spiritual growth. You see, where we've been wounded. We've been wounded on the physical half, through the physical family. We've been generationally, wounds have been generationally passed down. But this is the lifetime where those wounds are gonna be exposed to the vessels who have been the recipient of that family wounding generationally. Spiritual energy, and that's what we're dealing with when we're dealing with a collective. And your family wounding generationally passed down is a collective wounding, which is a spiritual wounding. So those wounds has to be manifested in order to be exposed, identified, cleansed and purified, the Virgo role, cleansed and purified of those impurities and false values in order for us to heal and then be able to ascend or step up uh, to uh, a new level of spiritual rulership. So that transformation of values that liberates us from the false values of the matrix or the illusion is the liberation that we're speaking of uh, with Scorp Scorpio energy represented as the ego. Um, so uh, as we liberate ourselves from the false values of the matrix or the illusion. Remember, physical and spiritual are opposites. So new values that are in opposition. That is how we prove we've unplugged from the matrix. Is going in the opposite direction of what is a value in the physical uh, reality of illusion where we've been programmed in false values. Someone has put a bridge uh, between us moving our spirit out from our subconscious, our ancient memory, our Akashic records, we're moving our spirit out from emotional doubts, fears, and guilts, and how we've been programmed generationally, and those wounds have been passed down generationally, and now it's time to let go of those false values, those false programmings of the matrix or of the illusion that is Scorpio's role in balance with Taurus, the sign of values and habits. So a transformation of our values, a transformation of our habits. Um, we can't take old baggage up with us. We can't go up in um, discord because this is all about harmonization. When I say we don't blend energy, that is what I mean. We don't blend energy, we harmonize energy. That means everybody has a unique purpose to bring to the table and contribution to this holistic process, the one and all and the all in one. Your reality is no more wrong or right than anyone else's. We all master 
through guidance from our spirit, through many lifetimes, mastering in the purpose, we came here to contribute, which is identified through that Taurus energy, your self-value, your self-worth. When you go internal and define the value of that purpose, you came to contribute to this larger universal purpose being fulfilled. Uh, so transforming your values and your habits, the horizontal leg of that fixed cross. So the evolution, Aquarius, of a new age rulership, Leo, in order to evolve as the new age rulers, there has to be a transformation, Scorpio, of our values. That is what we're looking at with the fixed cross, the four horses of the apocalypse that does the heavy work, that does the enforcement of what the cardinal cross will activate. The fixed cross is what enforces that as the army or the enforcers of um, activating uh, or reversing the energy from a mundane physical illusion of power to a spiritual, creative, and royal empowerment as we go internal rather than looking outside of ourselves to understand our true value from within. That is how mama speaks to us internally through how we feel from our ancient memory. She is the ancient of ancients. And we have reached mama's half of this operation. We've just completed father's half air and fire, or the masculine half, the air and the fire, uh, what we know, what our logic and reason, what we can figure out, um, that is father's domain, the air element, the knowing, the spiritual half. Um, um, that, like I said, energy can only go 180 degrees. We've reached the maximum of 180 degrees of the masculine half of this operation through the air element and the fire element. Now notice I'm not saying male, female, I'm saying masculine and feminine. Masculine means external and feminine means internal. So we're not, you have all of that in you. So uh, we've reached the maximum of what we know or what we need to know uh, in the Aquarian age, uh, the age of I know coming to the highest knowing of who we are as creative rulers. Leo, that's where the I know of Aquarius also comes into balance with Leo. I know Aquarius. I am a creative ruler, Leo. In order to activate that rulership, you have to know your power in order to activate your power. If you don't know it, you don't have it. That is the Aquarius and Leo axis of energy. That is why in the movie, The Matrix, when they took Neo to the Oracle, he's trying to identify his power through his ego. And uh, so he doubts his power. And so when they take him to the Oracle, that's why she says, no, you're not the one. But she points to the sign above the door that says, know thyself. If you don't know you're the one, then you're not the one. It's not until you know you're the one, do you become the one. That is what the Aquarius and Leo axis is bringing to the table, knowing your power in order to activate your power. If you don't know it, you don't have it. You, you guys know my phrase, hammer time. You can't touch this because I know the source of my power. That's who we're talking about, Mama Universe, when we talk about source of energy. Mama universe, all energy comes from the universe. And she passes that scepter down through daughter earth, who then manifests and materializes that energy at ground level or her boots on the ground, her warriors uh, at ground zero. Mama universe is too omniscient to come down and take care of her family. She is the energy of family. That is her domain of rulership the family, especially her ancient universal melanated family. That is her domain, but she's too ominous to come down here uh, to ground level to administer to her children. So that's why she sent her vessels in, uh, her boots on the ground, uh, who can now access that energy uh, from Mama Universe, passing her scepter down, and then we can manifest and materialize that energy at ground level to serve Mama's purpose, taking care of her children. Because now that they have become corrupted at a global level, 
The next level after global is planetary, which is how Big Mama now comes to the table because she is Mama Universe and the planets are her children, especially daughter Earth, her precious stone, the cornerstone, um, the uh, boots on the ground, the physical vessels of sacrifice and struggle we have been the vessels of sacrifice and struggle in the masculine half of this operation. Uh, not just this lifetime, but through many lifetimes, we've been the vessels of sacrifice and struggle because energy, and this is all about energy, energy only unfolds through that negative and positive polarity. What I can't started talking about, the balance between the negative and the positive polarity. There has to be a dual balance of those opposites in order to create the whole. If it's not whole, it's not real. Anytime you're looking at a part of the whole, that is the illusion. And we've been looking at a part of the whole. We've only been on the masculine half. So that's been a part of the whole. And that is the illusion. You have to see the whole in order to see the real. So um, they've reached their maximum of abuse of power. And now that's at a global level. Now we're going to a planetary level where we complete the half or the 180 degrees of the masculine half. We just put a pin in it. It doesn't become immaterial. We just put a pin in it, you see, as a platform for the opposite response on the spiritual half in equal measure. Two halves make a whole. There's always an opposite reflection. One visible, the conscious realm, the father's domain, the air element, and one hidden, the subconscious, the internal, the antiquity, mama's domain. That is the one hidden, the subconscious, the interest into our ancient Akashic records, a reconnection to our ancestral powers. Um, as we have now uh, ready to balance father spirit with mama's soul in order to become whole or holistic. So everything did start matriarchal. All colors come from the color black. Um, that's the melanin component. All colors come from the color black is why our Black Mama universe, why our ancestors came out as the original rulers with powers. They could fly. They could breathe underwater. They could talk telepathically with the plants, the animals, the universe, each other. We still have those powers. But their subconscious, Mama's domain, internal, uh, ancestral, they're not of the conscious realm. Father's domain, the air element, the half we've just completed in the balance of that negative and positive polarity. There has to be a negative polarity in order to um, get the opposite response uh, in the positive polarity or the spiritual returns of what you've struggled and sacrificed through many lifetimes, not just this lifetime, but all your struggles and sacrifices from all your past lifetimes are now tallied up as an investment in what is now getting ready to pay off in opposite spiritual return, in spiritual empowerment and spiritual reward. So to the same extent that you've struggled and sacrificed, we've now completed that half, the negative half, that negative polarity. Like I said, there has to be a dual balance of those opposites. The ultimate dual balance of opposites is the masculine in balance with the feminine and the spiritual in balance with the physical. That's the highest dual balance of those opposites that has to be fulfilled in order to complete that full 360 degree spiral with how we open up that vortex for access to the next level energy vibration. Uh, and all this has commenced at the winter solstice where we crossed over, but you don't blend energy. That means you have to complete one half. That's what most people don't understand about this process is that you have to complete one half before you activate the opposite response in equal measure. Two halves make a whole. You don't blend energy. You harmonize energy. That means everybody has a unique purpose and contribution 
as they step up as a royal ruler. Uh, they all have a unique contribution to the whole, but we have to harmonize. We don't try to blend. We don't try to dismiss uh, someone else's uh, reality that they're making a contribution. That means we all come together in harmony. We harmonize that unique energy that we've all mastered in through many lifetimes, through guidance from your spirit. Now it's time to bring the final piece to that table when we go to into the Aquarian age. I always compare it to a great big puzzle, uh, a great big puzzle in each lifetime of your mastery in your purpose is like one piece of the puzzle. And then you uh, master in that purpose uh, through guidance from your spirit, that's one piece of the puzzle. Doesn't make a lot of sense, but you mastered because of your guidance from your spirit, which gave you access to the next lifetime where you continued that mastery, uh, the second piece of the puzzle, and then continue to the next lifetime, the third piece of the puzzle. Now we're bringing the final piece of that puzzle in this lifetime when we went into the Aquarian age. So we're now bringing our final pieces of that puzzle, putting them in place. Only now do we see the bigger picture or the bigger purpose that's been unfolding through each lifetime. We've been bringing our mastery each lifetime as a piece of the puzzle. Now it's time for all those pieces to come together in culmination, each one having a unique piece or purpose and contribution to the whole, the one and all in the all in one. So everybody bringing their unique piece of puzzle and contribution so we can see this bigger universal picture, our purpose being fulfilled, but everybody has a unique contribution. So it's not about blending. Uh, you're wrong. I'm right. You know, it's not about that. It's about each one of us mastering and our unique purpose and contribution to the whole, the one and all in the all in one. Um, what describes this to me the best, if you ever went to a football game and you watch them do uh, the, um, uh, what is it they call it? The, um, um, what is it they call it? The, um, somebody help me here. Um, the, dang, I don't know how I lost that, but, um, you know, where each section will stand up um, and complete a spiral or a circle. Um, what's that? I can't hear you. The wave. The yeah. wave. <laughs> okay. Yes, there it is. The wave. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. But the wave, that's how this is described, like the wave. Each section is bringing their piece to the table. And as they stand up and then the next section stands up, the other section stands, that prior section sits down and you'll see it wave full circle or full spiral uh, in that stadium. That's what it's like. It's like the wave, everybody bringing a contribution, um, unique in the fulfillment of that full spiral. But like I said, anytime we get in one position, um, that's our stagnation. That's our wounding. That's what we've been in the masculine half. We've been stagnated and wounded through the physical family. The physical family is our step family. The spiritual family is our true family because daughter earth is Cinderella energy. Daughter Earth is Cinderella energy. You know, uh, the rejected stone who becomes the cornerstone. It's in her rejection and redemption. The Earth is transformed uh, through Capricorn energy, representing Daughter Earth, the last Earth sign, the last cardinal sign, the princess of the royal family or the high priestess. And remember, you have all that energy in you. Uh, Capricorn is the sign of rejection. So wherever you've been rejected in your value externally, is where uh, you have to redeem that value within yourself, that Taurus energy, going internal and redeeming your value from within. And then that leads you to the second earth sign, Virgo, where you cleanse and purify of those false values, unplug from the matrix and ascend to the spiritual half where you go to the last cardinal sign or the last earth sign, uh, Capricorn, where you step up as the high priestess, the princess, 
uh, purified, not uncompromised in your value, in your character. Uh, Capricorn brings the quality uh, to the table. Whenever uh, the quality, um, when it reaches its full quality, uh, that's uh, the manifestation or the materialization of that creative process. That's why the daughter is the last one to come to the table, but she is the one through the earth element who manifests and materializes that energy at ground, uh, in fulfillment. So passing that scepter down from the highest universal level to the lowest level of the earth, daughter earth, those of us who fail as royal beings from the highest royal level to the lowest and in transformation, we take it back full spiral uh, to the highest again. Uh, the planetary ruler of Scorpio is Pluto. Scorpio is the sign of transformation and Pluto is the sign of regeneration. So that's the planetary ruler of Scorpio. Regeneration through, through um, Pluto and transformation through Scorpio. Uh, they work together. So... Um, Whenever you're at the highest level spiritually, whenever you're at the highest level spiritually, the only way to take it to an even higher level is you have to regenerate the energy, which means you have to fall even lower than you were high so that you can bring it back full spiral to a higher position um, in the regeneration. Uh, and transformation. That is, like I said, Scorpio's role in that fixed cross, a transformation and a regeneration of our values. I already described to you the lower mundane uh, system of value versus the higher universal values. So uh, transforming our values, liberating us to higher universal values uh, as we regenerate uh, the energy falling from the highest royal level to an even lower level than we were high so that we can bring it back full spiral to an even higher level. That's the only way to take spiritual energy to a higher level, regenerated, falling even lower than you were high to bring it back full spiral to a higher position uh, in the universe. So that is the role between uh, uh, Scorpio uh, and its affinity with Pluto uh, as it connects to Taurus, the sign of values, uh, and uh, the planetary ruler of Taurus is Venus. So we're dealing with the harmonization, harmonization in our values uh, when it comes to uh, how we had to regenerate those um you know, regenerate that energy from the highest to the lowest and then full circle back to an even higher level. And that is the fixed cross uh, that does that uh, reversal uh, from that mundane physical illusion of power to a spiritual, creative and royal empowerment. And um, I have seen that the dominant horizontal league um, is what's coming into play. Uh, we've been seeing that most dominant, that transformation of our values, each one of us going through our cleansing and our healing uh, in order to step up as the new rulers. So uh, that is the residuals of what we're seeing with that horizontal leg of the fixed cross between Taurus and Scorpio, because now I'm starting to see uh, the mutable cross start to come into fruition. And that's where we start tapping into the magic of uh, a new power, a new magical power in the universe as the new rulers uh, evolving from an abuse of power to that humanitarian empowerment. Um, that is what this whole system of energy in this larger universal purpose is fulfilling. So always remember there's a universal purpose being fulfilled. We're just the individual aspect of that. We've been the physical vessels of sacrifice and struggle. We've been the boots on the ground, ground zero uh, in our struggles and sacrifices. That has to occur. That has to be a platform uh, for the opposite response 
in spiritual reward and spiritual empowerment, that negative and positive polarity, no pain, no gain. To the same extent the pain will be the same extent the gain. Always the darkest before the dawn, which means we have to completely get through the worst to get to the best. But as I said, my favorite is as bad as it's been, is as good as it's about to get because you don't blend energy. You harmonize energy. And the ultimate harmonization is when you're ready to balance those opposites. Two halves make a whole. Wherever you can balance opposites is where you complete that spiral and open up that vortex. We're completing a major spiral. We're at the uh, um, Father Spirit. We've completed that half, what we know. Now we know everything we need to know. Now it's time to utilize what we know. Not enough just to know. Now we have to learn how to walk in that knowing. That is how we access the magic, by walking in the knowing. You know, me saying, hammer time, you can't touch this. And because I know that, they can't touch me. So you're the one who creates your reality. Spirit moves inside out, not outside in. That means it's what you send out as to what you spiral back. And if you're sending it out at 20%, you're going to spiral it back at 20%. If you're sending it out at 80%, you're going to spiral it back at 80%. It's on you. That is why the powers that have been has kept us in doubts, fears, and guilt to lower our vibration. So we're thinking pessimistic and energizing pessimistic. We're the ones energizing the illusion for them. Uh, this is why they despite, um the powers that have been uh, Humpty Dumpty is the egg. That means he has a fragile position of power. It's not real. It's based on an illusion. We've been programmed mentally to energize an illusion. Uh, and we're the ones giving it its energy. But now that we're waking up, pulling our energy away from this illusion, it's blowing holes in the illusion, no longer has the power to sustain itself. That's how Humpty Dumpty is falling off the wall. Um, so, um, but it's all about what we think and how we're thinking. That's why they're keeping us looking outside of ourselves and down, uh, you know, every day there's a multitude of chaos that they're presenting to you. Please don't fall for this. Don't fall for the achy day. Okie doke. That's your distraction. They're distracting you from looking up and within, uh, there's distracting you to look down, uh, you know, and lower your vibration and make you vulnerable to attack. If you believe they can get you, yes, they damn sure can. If you know they can't touch you, they can't. That is what you got to know. And when you say I'm hammer time, that means you're walking in the knowing. That is why I can walk on an airplane, look around at the people, talk to them telepathically, tell them how fortunate they are to be on an airplane with me, a royal being. Because I'm on that plane, it's going to be protected. They will be protected in lieu of that. That is when you're walking in the knowing. Another story I tell about walking in the knowing is I say, suppose your spirit comes to you and tells you uh, today when you walk out that door, someone's going to try come and try to pump at you in your face. But don't worry. They're not going to be able to touch a hair on your head. They're not going to be able to get a fraction of an inch within your face. So indeed, you go out and indeed someone comes and tries to pump at you in your face. What are you going to do at that moment? Most of us is going to duck. We're going to fight back or we're going to run. But it's not until you stand there can you prove that the power of the spirit is more real than the physical illusion that's hitting you in the face. It's not until you stand there can you prove they're not going to be able to touch a hair on your head or get a fraction of your an inch within your face. That is when you're truly walking in the knowing versus knowing. You have to know your power in order to activate it. Now you got to act like you know it. Uh, what mama says is you have to now walk in the authority of your royalty. Walk in the authority of your royalty. That means you got to act like you know it. You got to act like you know who you are. You see, that is when you're walking in the knowing. Yep, no, no, no flinching. And, um, you know, like 
Uh, that reminds me of when I did uh, do that lecture in Houston, Texas, and the um, uh, the um, presentation was called Apocalypse Now, How Do We Contribute? Uh, I did this in Houston, Texas, and I remember telling them, I don't care what chaos is raging right outside your window. You don't flinch. You don't even blink. Your lack of fear is your lamb's blood and the chaos will pass you over. There's no fixing this. There's no making it work. This has to fall. And you have to show you have no attachment to propping up this illusionary reality. And that is how the chaos will pass you by. So I don't care what chaos, I don't care if there's uh, aliens falling out the sky. I don't care if they're telling you uh, you know, there's going to be war. There's going to be a nuclear attack. I don't care. Whatever threat they're giving you to keep you in doubts, fears, and guilt, keep you lowered in your vibration, uh, and keep you vulnerable to attack. They can't come up and get us. They have to pull us down to make us vulnerable. So if we believe they can get us, anything, anybody, nobody has no more power than you do to create your own reality in partnership with your spirit. You and your spirit has to be in a partnership. Your spirit is going to be your opposite energy. So if you're Aries, your spirit's going to be Libra. If you're Cancer, your spirit's going to be Capricorn. If you're Aquarius, your spirit's going to be Leo. You're always going to deal with the opposite energy uh, as your spiritual energy. And this, the whole key to everything is balance. The whole key to everything in the universe is balance. There has to be an opposite reflection. There has to be an opposite and equal reflection. Two halves make a whole. You have the physical connotation that reflects the opposite in the spiritual half. And it's not till the two halves come into equal balance do you complete that whole or that full spiral, that full circle. So um, now it's time to walk in the authority of that royalty. Now you got it. Once you've been ordained by big mama, you better act like you know it. You know, what she told me is you will represent me as I would be represented. And that is no mealy mouth walking on eggshell type of bullshit. So you have to be able to stand in the face of this physical illusion that's giving you a false, um, um, a false reality. You have to be able to look that in the face and understand who you are. We're spiritual beings having a physical experience, not the other way around. So um, now it's time to act like you know it. Once you've been ordained by Big Mama, you better act like you know it because she doesn't play. She like homie the clown. Uh, she don't play. If she sits, you're about to pollute her family. She will F you up first and ask questions later. You know, father, he does the compromising. He does the negotiation through the air element. Let's come to an agreement. Let's make a contract. Can't we all just get along? That's his role. Nothing wrong with that. That's what he's supposed to do. Mama is just the opposite. You know, very ferocious and vicious about protecting her family. And right now, that the sun is in Capricorn, that means we're fulfilling cancer. Cancer is the sign of Kali Ma, the ferocious and vicious mama. Why we call female dogs bitches, very ferocious about taking care of their family. That is mama, very, very vicious Kali Ma, that's cancer energy. Uh, she's imaged, crouched down, a woman, you know, with necklace of skulls, a blade through her teeth, blood dripping down. This is the image of Kali Ma and her ferociousness when it comes to her family. So she doesn't play. And if she's ordained you as one of hers, then you better act like you know it. I remember when I was getting my training in magic, uh, I was living in North Carolina. And I remember um, Mama um, I, you know, I couldn't get a job. I begged spirit for even a part-time job. It kept saying no. So I'm living very frugally, uh, trying to make it work. And I remember I would go to the grocery store 
And if my purchases came to $3.21, that would be exactly what I would have in my purse. Uh, if my purchases came to $1.89, that would be exactly what I had in my purse. And it was like mama was saying, I'm going to take care of your needs as you have a need for them. No more, no less. And I was good with that. That worked for me, you know, but I remember that I had bought some paper towels. That was a luxury for me. And I'm trying to use the paper towels all frugally, sparingly. And Big Mama walked up behind me and said, I know you're not trying to act like you can't get some more paper towels. So that's what I mean. You better act like you know it, even if I, even to the level of using paper towels. That was important for mama to let me know, you know, who I am and have no fears, no doubts about anything. I am a royal being. I have a royal entourage, a universal entourage of energy of the universe. I'm a royal princess who has a cosmic mama as the queen. What sort of parent would give their child a stone when they ask for bread? So we have to act like we know who we are as the royal beings of the universe, whose scepter of power is passed down from mama universe to daughter earth. And we're all daughter earth, even you know the males. You know, uh, we're all uh, vessels of daughter earth, you see, uh, whether we're male or female. But the earth and water is feminine, which represents the overall divine feminine, and the air and fire is masculine, the overall divine masculine. So we are the vessels. We may come in as a vessel, a female vessel with masculine energy, and that's only to learn balance, that only so you can understand the principles of balance more easily when you come in in the opposite energy of your uh, physical vessel. So um, there's just so many layers to this operation when it comes to how spiritual energy unfolds through the multitude of levels. We have the individual level, uh, balance with our own spirit. That's the first balance we have to complete is a, is a balance with our own spirit. All the other levels will open up from there where we'll go to the couple level, one-on-one -on -one relationship. Then we go to a family level. Uh, then we go to a community level, local, national, international, to the global level, then the planetary level, a universal level, even a star system level. These are all the levels we have access to balance energy. And the more you harmonize your individual energy or melody to the higher vibrations uh, of the universe, the higher you can take that vibration uh, to the highest levels of the universe, as high as you can take it up is as high as you can receive it back. So, um, you know, you can't go very far up in discord. We have to let go of uh, false values. We have to let go of false habits. We have to let go of our anger, our frustrations. We have to let go of our hatred. We have to let go of our judgment. We have to let go of so many things we've been programmed to exist on in this physical illusion of power. It's now time to transition uh, from our dependency on material to a spiritual empowerment that comes from within. That's the internal. You're gonna get an opposite reflection from the internal to the external, or even just looking at a part of the whole, which is the illusion. Only way to see the real is to see the whole, our holistic, it's not real until it's whole. Um, if you can be just one iota outside of the completion of that 360 spiral and it's still in aberrant rotation, uh, still going up against the grain of the universal flow of energy, it has to be a complete balance uh, between those two opposites. The more uh, the balance, uh, the more premium the quality of that creation. The more imbalance, the more you degrade the creative process because it's like um, you're only going to create where you connect in that balance of opposites. You're only going to create where you make a connection. So the more balanced you are in your energy, the more quality of creation. 
you degrade the creative process when you try to uh, come together uh, not in balance. It's being off balance that causes friction because you're only going to create at the level you connect. So if you got a, uh, a superior uh, and an inferior um, connection, the top of the superior becomes non and void, you see, and it degrades the process, the creative process. It's where you come together in balance is how you can harmonize that energy. But when you are coming together in an imbalanced relationship, like I said, you're only gonna create at the level you connect. You connect. That means the higher vibration of the superior is going to become non and void. That's how you degrade the creative process. So the whole key to everything in the universe is balance. Two halves make a whole, 180 degrees on each half, and you have to complete one half before you activate the opposite response in equal measure. So as much as you've struggled, I always tell my clients, hold on by your toenails, because to the extent that you endure the struggle is going to be to the same extent that you're going to reap the reward. We've been wounded on the physical half, but we cross over in the healing from the spiritual half. So wounding from the physical half, healing from the spiritual half, where we cross over from one half to the opposite half. Our opposites are the same. They're just coming from opposite perspective. Like I said, it's like temperature. One does it cross from the cold half into the hot half or from the hot half into the cold half. They're both temperatures and you have to do uh, those two halves. So the negative polarity versus the positive polarity, but they're contingent on each other to the same extent of the pain or the struggle is gonna be the same extent of the reward. Uh, one example I always do is um, I talk about how, um, you know, how you um, say you are talking to your spirit about getting another car because the one you have is not going to last much longer, but you just don't have the down payment. And you tell your spirit, I just don't have the down payment for another car, but I know I'm going to need one pretty soon. So you go out, get in your car, get in a car accident. Not your fault. You don't get hurt. Now you get an insurance payment. That's your spirit answering you. It has to answer you through a negative and positive polarity. So the car accident was the negative polarity that activated the opposite response in that reward of an insurance payment like you requested from your spirit. But we are focused on the accident. Woe is me. I've had a car accident. Why these things happen to me? We don't understand the process of the balance between the negative polarity and the positive response, but no blending, completing a half, and now activating the opposite response in equal measure. So that is just the principles of how energy unfolds. There's formulas for activating energy, and that is um, what we do. We complete one half for the opposite response where we get the other half, 180 degrees, which completes a 360 spiral. Once we complete that 360 spiral, it opens up the vortex for access to the next level energy vibration, where we complete another cycle, access for the next level, complete another cycle, access to the next level. You never get there. You only complete spirals or cycles for access to the next level where you start one at a higher vibration. This is an infinite process of transformation, regeneration for evolution of spiritual rulership, which is the fixed cross, as I explained. It's an infinite process. That's the number eight, and we're in the eight year. That's what this infinite process represents, that number eight. As you hit those um, four points of energy, uh, from uh, mother to son, and then from father to daughter. This is going to make that figure eight, the figure of infinity. And this is an eight year where all this is coming to a head and a culmination. Uh, uh, so um, an infinite process of transformation, regeneration for evolution of a new spiritual rulership 
out of the abuse of power to a humanitarian empowerment as the ancient rulers, our ancestors are now passing us the baton as the new age rulers to evolve uh, out of this abuse of power to this humanitarian empowerment for humanity. That is the bigger purpose being served, that universal purpose being served. We're just the individual aspect, but we can't lose with what we have to use. So we're now ready to tap into the magic, that third cross now coming into play, uh, opening up to the magic of the universe. So start playing with your magic. It's gonna become more and more evident to you now. It's going to become evident to you. So utilize it. Not enough just to know. Now we got to walk in that knowing. We got to utilize what we know. We've completed everything we need to know on that masculine half. Now we have to be able to walk in that knowing. Father brings the, the spiritual energy to the table, but it takes mama to serve it up. And we're now at mama's time. Now it's mama time. Uh, like they say, Miller time is mama time. And that means magic. That means it's time to tap into the magic. But you got to know it. You got to operate in the authority. We root the spirits, not the other way around. Uh, but you got to know that and you got to rule them in that authority. If you don't rule them in the authority of that royalty, they will run rip shot over you. So you have to act like you know it. And that is how we step up as the new rulers. We rule the spirits, not the other way around. Watch the movie 13 Ghosts uh, to validate that. The spirit has to respond to written and spoken incantation. And if we give spirit a written or spoken invitation, it has to respond um, to that rulership. You know, but if you're all in fears, you know, if you're scared, you're showing uh, yourself as an emperor with no clothes exposing yourself as a fool. You got the power, but you don't know you have the power. So you got to know it. That's the Aquarian age connected to Leo. I know I am a creative ruler to step up to that rulership. You have to know your power and act like you know it. Uh, know you have a whole universe of energy at your disposal. Um, and you are the vessel who can manifest that energy uh, and materialize it at ground level. And that's how we're stepping into uh, this rulership. So that is it. Um, wow. Thank you, Sister Myra. I was over here going off. You hear me? I was like, <laughs> yes. I can tell there was a moment where you were like really, you know, tapped into my big mama. You were going oh, off. Yeah. 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 Once I get, once I, you know, I, I do have to, you know, I'll start slow and I'll continue to build and build and build. And then it'll just, you know, uh, bust open, you see. So, you know, that's, that's, how, if y'all know me, act like you know me. That's how I do it. <laughs> so, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that message. Give me one second. So I want to post this in the chat. Um, those of you um, do not donate on the YouTube channel. Please, if you want to uh, share a donation, this is Sister Myra's Cash App. Um, dollar sign Myra M Y R A Moss M O S S eight one three. If you like to, um, you know, send a love gift to Sister Myra, that is her Cash App right there. Um, <coughs> thank you so much, Sister Myra, for coming oh, on God. and like, yes, going doing this deep dive. You know. Oh, this is so much more than what I expected. And I'm so grateful, you know, for you taking your time yeah, out. I like to, to take you there. You know, I like to take you where you've never been before. I call me, what, what is it? Um, Starship, Starship, of, take you where you've never been before. So if I haven't done that, I haven't done my job. So I'm hopeful that I gave you a picture of a bigger purpose, what's really going on uh, versus all we've been able to see is the, uh, pieces of yes. what is going on, but now it's time for all that to come together, culmination. We're at that point, the winter solstice, that's like the 12 o'clock hand, that's the peak of the astrological cycle, that 12 o'clock hand is the winter solstice uh, when we go into Capricorn. That's a SAR, 
Sagittarius, uh, as a Sar has reached his abundance of power, now becomes equal to the high priestess or the princess Capricorn at the winter solstice. So this is where this energy comes to a peak, culminate, uh, and come to a, uh, uh, a fulfillment. And that's where we're at, you guys. We're at the peak of the fulfillment of this royal purpose, this universal purpose. So walk in the authority of that royalty, strut your stuff, act like you know it, you know, and know that you're invincible. Uh, it's only if you believe you can be attacked that you actually can be attacked. But if you know they can't touch you, I absolutely promise you they can't touch you. But you have to act like you, you have to know that and you have to act like you know that in order for it to become real. So thank you all. You know how much I love your family. And it definitely is my pleasure to share uh, this marvelous uh, Jubilee message with you today. So yes. my pleasure. Thank you again. Um, again, Sikamara, we love you so much and we appreciate your time um, and you know, energy and effort and all the knowledge that you share with us. So thank you again so much. You're welcome. The love is definitely mutual. You take care, you guys, everybody. Take care, family. Love Peace you. Peace, everyone. So yes. um, SAU, we're going to be in the app to do a brief Q&A. So make sure that you um, log into the app. For those who are not familiar, the link is below if you'd like to um, register to the SAU Collective. But we're going to go to the app because I have a, a couple of questions I want to ask you, Sister Myra, for you to share with the um, students. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. Sweet dreams, safe travels. I will see y'all soon. Peace, peace.